Hey guys, this is Peshmium.com and the new Galaxy S21 5G series is here. And this right here is the top of the line Galaxy S21 Ultra 5G. Now, there are a number of things that excite me about this phone, but I want to focus on three major aspects. The design, these cameras, and then there's the big one, the performance. Yes, we have the Exynos variant of the Galaxy S21 Ultra. So how does it compare to the Snapdragon 888? Does it fix all of the Exynos issues? Well, we will find out. So let's start. So this is the Galaxy S21 Ultra in all its phantom black glory. And to be honest, when I first saw the S21 in leaked renders, I did not really like the new camera style. But in person, trust me, it looks a lot better. See, the camera bump is still huge, slightly smaller than the Note 20 Ultra's camera bump, but still very big. And the camera module now merges into the frame of the phone. Now, this is something that's very subjective. At our office, some of us liked it, some did not, so to each their own, I guess. As for the new black finish, there's a lot of hype around it, but honestly, I get it because look at this phone. I think it looks really classy. See, personally, I always found the S20's gray glass back a little dull, but this is the way to go. It's the same matte glass haze finish from the Note 20 Ultra, and it just feels amazing in the hand and it looks great. And talking about the in-hand feel, this is a big phone, quite expectedly. 227 grams, 8.9 millimeters in thickness. So this is a hefty phone, but that's not taking away the fact that this phone is a premium flagship. I mean, apart from the new back design, the display looks even better. 6.8 inch of dynamic AMOLED with the QHD Plus resolution, 120 hertz refresh rate, which now works with QHD Plus, Gorilla Glass Victus, which by the way is present in the back too, S Pen support, 1500 nits of max brightness and a contrast ratio of 3 million is to 1. These numbers are amazing and the display, no surprise, looks absolutely stunning like every other Samsung flagship recently. Now coming to what you have been waiting for, the new Exynos chipset. Here are the specs of the S21 Ultra, the brand new 5 nanometer Exynos 2100 chipset with the Mali G78 GPU, LPDDR5 RAM, lots of it, and lots of UFS 3.1 storage. So the specs are good, but the important question is how does Exynos 2100 do when compared to the Snapdragon 888? Quite frankly, this time around, the Exynos 2100 is very close to the Snapdragon 888 in terms of specs. Here's a comparison. So they both are 5 nanometer chipsets made by Samsung. They both have the same CPU cores as well as arrangement. Cortex-X1 Prime Core, Cortex-A78 and Cortex-A55. The Exynos 2100 should have an advantage here because it has the higher clock speed on every single core. But other than that, it's very similar. Now the GPU is different. It's ARM Mali G78 GPU on the Exynos compared to the Adreno 660 on the Snapdragon. And from what I've heard, the Adreno 660 is more powerful, but we'll get a better idea with the benchmark scores. Apart from that, these chipsets are very similar. Integrated 5G modem, same max display support, 200 megapixel camera support, and etc. So from that comparison, it's pretty clear that the Exynos 2100 chipset is very close. It competes very well against the Snapdragon 888. In fact, they're very similar too. But I ran a few benchmark tests on the S21 Ultra and turns out the Exynos 2100 kind of falls short against the Snapdragon 888. So here's the Geekbench score and as you can see, it's not a massive difference, but the Snapdragon 888 scores higher, which is a little surprising since the CPU clock speed on the 2100 is higher. And before you say it, yes, I ran the benchmark several, numerous times really. Also, I know the Geekbench versions are different in both the screenshots, but the Snapdragon score is from the Qualcomm's reference device from a few months back, while the S21 Ultra has the latest Geekbench 5 version. Anyway, I also ran Antutu, 2 and this time they are on the exact same version, 8.3.4. And even here, the Snapdragon 888 is ahead, be it on the CPU front or GPU, as you can see, and it's a pretty big margin too. Again, just to let you know, ran this benchmark multiple times. To be honest, I think I'll wait to get hands on a Snapdragon 888 device and then again compare the benchmarks to be really sure how much of a difference there is, given how the specs of both these chipsets are so similar. And yeah, then give my verdict on the Exynos versus Snapdragon debate. Anyway, when it comes to real world performance, I've only had the phone for a day, like I said. So that's something I'm testing on the S21 Ultra. And see, the biggest complaint from previous Exynos chipsets have been lag and heating issues. So I'm going to test things out with those points in mind. So far, I've played a few sessions of COD Mobile on the S21 Ultra and the performance has been flagship great. So I'm hoping it remains consistent and cool. Now coming to the third big highlight, the cameras. Now this thing is literally, almost literally packed with cameras and some of the cameras here are really interesting. So there's the new HM308 megapixel sensor, first time on a phone. 
and it's set to bring improved dot focus, better low light and HDR performance. I'll test it out. Then there are two telephoto lenses. One, a periscope lens with 10x optical zoom support. The other, a usual telephoto lens with 3x optical zoom. And there's also a 12 megapixel ultra wide angle camera and a laser autofocus sensor. So this camera setup in itself seems very impressive. And from the photos I've taken, the new HM3 sensor seems to take some really good shots. But the truth is I've only used the phone for only a day. And while I will be testing the camera performance in the coming days, there are quite a few camera features and changes that I noticed and I want to talk about. First up, there's the new director's view where you get two modes, a vlogger view where you can use the front camera and any of the rear cameras in a split view or a picture in picture mode. I think we've seen this in other phones in the past, but the other mode is very interesting. It's called live thumbnails. I mean, you can see all the thumbnails on the right here, right? These show you the different camera views from the main lens, the ultra wide angle lens and the telephoto lens. So that when you're shooting a video, you can switch between lenses smoothly and, you know, more conveniently for a cooler looking video. Plus, you can combine the vloggers view with live thumbnails to have all the five cameras working at the same time. How cool is that? Space zoom is better too. I mean, the biggest complaint with the 100x space zoom was the shakiness that came with it. And the new S21 Ultra has a new zoom lock feature that kind of fixes things. Here's how it works. See, when you move past 20x zoom, the camera uses OIS as well as the new AI stabilization to help you lock at a certain building or whatever it is you're zooming at. So when you zoom at even 100x, the viewfinder remains locked on that subject. And yeah, it's not a crazy impossible to take a picture experience. It's good. Moving on, portrait mode is now called portrait mode, not live focus mode. So finally, there are also different portrait mode effects, studio, backdrop, color point, mono, and a few more. Single take is better too. It now lets you choose from the types of shots you want to capture in a single take. Here are all the different shot types and I think the processing has gotten a bit better too. The pro video mode now lets you record audio from both the S21 Ultra's mic as well as a Bluetooth earbud you might have so that you can capture better voice recording while also capturing better ambient noise. 4K 60fps now works on all cameras, be it the ultra wide telephoto or even the selfie camera. Super steady mode now works with 1080p 60fps, so yeah, there are camera improvements all around. Now to wrap things up, on the software front, the S21 Ultra comes with One UI 3.1 on top of Android 11. And if you're wondering about battery performance, the S21 Ultra has the same fairly big 5000 mAh battery from the S20 Ultra. But there's no fast charger here, no charger basically. This was kind of inevitable. To conclude things, there are only a few phones that get us all excited every year and the Galaxy S21 series is definitely one of them. And this, the new Galaxy S21 Ultra, is the ultimate S21 flagship. See, there's so many exciting things about this phone, be the design, the display, the crazy camera setup or the performance. It just packs so much tech everywhere. I know there are a few doubts around the S21 Ultra, like how does the camera fare against say the new iPhones? How is the long-term performance with Exynos 2100? Well, these are things that I will be testing in the coming days, but there's no doubt that the Galaxy S21 Ultra is the biggest and the best Samsung flagship right now. Anyway, I'd love to know what you guys think of the new Galaxy S21 Ultra, its camera features, its specs. Tell us in the comment section below. Also, give this video a like if you enjoyed it. Make sure to share it and subscribe to our channel for more amazing tech videos. Well, that's me signing off. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.